Well, Congressman, what are your thoughts on raising the debt ceiling? Well, look, if you've been around this long enough, uh, you know that we always pay our bills, right? At the end of the day, we pay our bills. But I don't think there's anything wrong with having a discussion, and it should be bipartisan for that matter, having a discussion of how we can try to avoid being in this situation again. You know, why do, we, why do so many think it's just okay to keep increasing our debt? And then there's others that say, this is dangerous, as I talked about today, and I think it is dangerous. So why not have a discussion, just as you would within your family, to say, hey, we can't just keep running up the credit card here. You know, at some point, we got to start making a change, or we, we lose our house, we lose our home, we lose our car. Something's got to change. So for the federal government to just keep borrowing, it's, it's, it's dangerous. And, and part of our debt is it goes, in, the interest on our debt goes into mandatory spending, okay? So you think about all the programs that you like, you know, whether it's military or whether, whatever it may be, housing, whatever the case may be, that's all under discretionary spending. And so when you have this pie of money and the interest on the debt is a big part of that pie of money, you keep shrinking what you have available for, for the programs that you do like, and you, and you may feel the federal government has a huge part in. So having that conversation to me is adult, and it's something that we, we should do. Now, I heard on the radio today, and I don't know who said it, but as I'm driving over here today, I heard the reporter say, well, Democrats say talking about reducing the debt is a non-starter. I would like to know why. Why is that a non-starter, to talk about it and to try and do something to quit adding to our debt at least. At least let's quit adding to our debt. Um, and if we can even reduce it, isn't that better? You know, I, I think about this when I, when I go to vote on, on many things. Will this bill make Americans more free? Which is what our foundation is all about, individual freedom. Will this make Americans more free? And will the next generation say thank you? And I don't think they're gonna say thank you for us spending money for things they'll never use. And they'll have to pay for it. Will you vote to raise the debt ceiling? Oh, I think eventually we will. But again, it's, it, it's, not, it, it's fair. Like I said, we always end up paying our bills. Uh, I don't think I'll vote for one that is just, you know, flat increase the debt ceiling without a conversation and some changes made, whether they're policy changes, something that brings us in a better direction so we don't just keep tallying up our debt. What is your plan in terms of trying to raise that or whether, whether you should or not? One of the most important things that this Congress is going to have to do is deal with the debt ceiling and uh, to ensure that we don't default on our loans. If we default on our loans, we will send the economy into a tailspin and millions of Americans will lose their jobs. And so while some want this debate to be about spending, it's, it's a very important debate. Spending is. Let's talk about spending and deal with the budget. Uh, the debt ceiling and paying our debt uh, is a very different conversation. That conversation is about whether or not we are going to default on our loans and send millions and millions of people uh, to unemployment lines. Uh, I, I'm not going to be part of defaulting on our loans. And so I have joined a group of uh, 30 Democrats and 30 Republicans who are going to work on any number of big bipartisan issues, uh, getting the debt ceiling done, passing a budget, and protecting Social Security and Medicare, that's going to be top of the list. Speaker McCarthy says that they will not, uh, or at least his, his group, if you will, will not vote to increase the debt ceiling without concessions uh, regarding fiscal spend, uh, spending and whatnot. Um, what will you do to try and get maybe the more moderate Republicans to come over to the side that wants to raise the debt ceiling? So a couple of things. One is uh, I've joined this group of 30 Democrats and Republicans. Uh, you know, they're going to be very uh, instrumental in getting uh, the debt ceiling and the budget resolution um, uh, and in a way where we do not touch Social Security and Medicare. The idea that they want to cut Social Security and Medicare is a non-starter uh, with voters, and it would be terrible uh, for families and for our economy. Uh, so being part of that group, being part of those uh, conversations, making sure that people are talking and working through uh, whatever the issues are so that we can figure out a way to get this to the floor and get it passed, uh, is going to be hugely important and then talking about it constantly and making sure that people understand my colleagues 
understand that spending is a one debate. Uh, paying uh, your, your, your debts, that's another one. And if you default on uh, your loans, you, we, you're going to send this economy into a tailspin. And you're going to have to look into the eyes of millions of Americans and say, I was responsible you know, for this. They're going to have to do that and say, you know, I caused this. And I don't think, despite their rhetoric, that they're willing uh, to uh, you know, send this economy into a, a, you know, a tailspin and millions of people uh, you know, would lose their job. I don't think they'll do it.